Wakanda Forever returns as a sequel to the original Black Panther from 2018. The film has massive expectations not only in outdoing the original, but also introducing a proper tribute to Chadwick Boseman. With the Black Panther now gone from the MCU, how will Wakanda fend off its rival? And how will the sequel connect with the rest of the proper MCU? Namor is a big new villain for the MCU, so how will his origins and character do on the big screen? We also expect Riri Williams to play a factor in future phases for Marvel. Most importantly, how will this film deliver in comparisons with the rest of Phase 4? Also, slight spoilers for this review, just, you know, the overall plot theme of the story. Hello there, Joel from Real Talk Movies here. I'd like for you to give this video a thumbs up and hit the like button if you can. Help me reach my sub goal by hitting that red subscribe button. Click that bell button to get notified every time I upload a video. Now let's get on to today's topic. The story for this film was incredible. I loved returning to Wakanda and seeing the tribes all gather. Sadly, we see a funeral for T'Challa as the intro for the film, but the film does a wonderful job in handling the passing of Chadwick's character. Ryan Coogler deserves massive credit for delivering the best second sequel for an MCU film since Captain America The Winter Soldier. Latia Wright's character Shuri was the central focus for this film, and seeing her grief change and progress the entire film was very touching. Angela Bassett as Queen Ramona was incredible as well. You can hear the grief and sadness in her voice in every scene that she's been in. The more played by Tena Huerta, has a solid debut as the film's main antagonist. His conflict with Wakanda comes across as protection for his own nation of Talokan. Both nations gets personal very quick. The origins for Namor also changed somewhat from the comics, but it was no major change to him as a person, as a character. Namor is openly a mutant and has incredible powers that compares with the Hulk and Thor. He also has winged feet and moves seamlessly through the air. The underwater world of Talokan is both terrifying and breathtaking. Seeing the people live amongst the world in peace really drives home the personal conflict message that Namor is dealing with. He comes out very quickly to both offer Wakanda an alliance, but a threat to them as well. There is a major conflict early involving the US government and sparks a conflict between the two nations. The film wastes no time into going into the conflict when we were introduced to Riri Williams. She's a college student and has a knack for creating machines like good old Tony Stark has. Her role in the entire film kind of is the reason why the conflict takes place in the first place. Queen Ramona is fired up the entire film grieving her son's passing and even reaches out help from Nakia. Nakia has been gone and grieving the child's passing for over a year in Haiti. Each character had a connection with them and gave fans of the original film some familiarity. The film had some very comedic scenes and did a good job on contrasting the worlds of Wakanda and Talokan. Namor is a god amongst his people and his origins come with a connection to the conquistador crusades in the Americas. His people flee the surface world and gain powers to breathe underwater. They have a civilization that is also thriving with vibranium. Namor introduces his own world to Shuri in an effort to try to charm her to his side. And I think his powers pose a real threat, not just to Wakanda, but to other enemies as well. A major event takes place early and forces Namor to take matters into his own hands. Shuri returns to Wakanda along with Riri and rallies the nation against Namor. I don't want to spoil too much of the film, so I will maintain my spoiler thought in a separate video. We do get the return of the Black Panther and Shuri was already confirmed online. The two nations have a final conflict and agree to a ceasefire truce. While this angers some of his own people, Namor understands how different Black Panther makes a conflict for them now. The connection with the US government also teases some bigger themes within the MCU, so I'll save my thoughts on those in a later video as well. I just have to compliment the entire cast for giving their entire effort for this film. You feel the emotion of all the characters that are connected to T'Challa dominate the entire film. The origins and plot themes with Namor were done great. The connection to the Mesoamerican region also expands the MCU even further. I can't wait to see how Namor and his people will play a factor going forward. I appreciated how Shuri was the one that brought back the heart-shaped herbs with her skills and the main reason why the Black Panther has returned. Her abilities just aren't limited to protecting Wakanda as a warrior, obviously. My overall grade for this film is 9.1 out of 10. Incredible casting, story, and plot elements. The originality of Namor's story and explaining to T'Challa's passing were my biggest things to watch for. However, I was taken back by the strong emotional pull from the film. I think most MCU fans will have a great time with the film since it has that universal MCU appeal, but also a strong emotional message that resonates miles more than Thor Love and Thunder ever did. But tell me in the comments your thought on the film. Leave this video a like and subscribe for more videos. Check out some of my other videos or the playlist on your screen right now. This has been Joel from Real Talk Movies. See you soon.